In a beautiful American town in the suburbs, Jim and Linda live with their daughters Bridget and Megan. They have a beautiful life together, although lately things have become tense because Jim is constantly out on business trips. One afternoon, the phone rings and Linda doesn't pick it up on time. The one leaving a message is Jim, who is away on another trip. He says he meant what he said in front of the girls the other night and that he wants Linda to remember it, but before he can add more, he has to hang up because he's getting another call. Linda doesn't understand the message and calls him back, but she also gets the answering machine and asks Jim to call her back before going back to her chores. This includes putting some stickers on the glass windows to avoid accidents. Sometime later, Linda gets a visit from Sheriff Riley, who brings bad news. Yesterday Jim died in a car accident with a truck. Linda doesn't understand because she just got his message on the machine, but Riley assures her it's true, leaving her in a devastated yet numb state. Crying, Linda goes through the motions around the house before going to the school to pick up her daughters, not giving them the news until they're safe at home. A few hours later, Linda's mother Joanne comes to the house to help her daughter with everything, and Linda calls her best friend Annie for help too, but she's met with the answering machine again. That night, Joanne stays in the guest's room, but Linda falls asleep on the couch clinging to a wedding picture. The next morning, Linda wakes up in her bed, wearing different clothes. She assumes her mother moved her but when she goes to check on her, Joanne is nowhere to be found. When she hears some noises, Linda goes downstairs, and she's shocked to find Jim casually having breakfast as usual. Linda feels rather awkward because if it was all a dream it felt incredibly real, but obviously this is better. After dropping the girls at school, Linda checks the answering machine, but it doesn't have any messages. When she goes out to the grocery store, she's so distracted that she almost hits another car. Sheriff Riley comes to check on her and gives her a warning, but he doesn't recognize her. At the store, Linda meets with Annie and asks her if yesterday she received a message from her, but Annie says she didn't. Afterward Linda goes home to keep working on her chores. She starts with the laundry and is surprised to find some clothes that she was sure she already washed. Then when she goes to the garden to hang the clothes, she accidentally trips on a toy and falls on top of a dead crow, which covers her in blood. Feeling disgusted, Linda rushes to wash her hands and throw the crow in the trash. Later during dinner and bedtime, Linda can't stop staring at Jim, not believing he is real. The following morning, Linda wakes up alone in bed wearing Jim's shirt. She discovers many details that confuse her further. There's a bottle of wine on her night table, all the mirrors around the house are covered with blankets, and there's a bottle of medicine in the kitchen sink. To make matters worse, when she goes downstairs, she discovers Joanne and Annie are handling Jim's funeral. Linda freaks out because she swears there's something wrong and nobody understands when she says Jim is alive, so she ignores her friend's worry and goes looking for their daughters. The girls are in the garden, and when Linda checks on them, she's disturbed to discover Bridget has her face covered with scars, although Megan still thinks she's the most beautiful princess. Bridget wants to know what it was like when Jim died, and when Linda answers she doesn't know because she wasn't there, Bridget wonders how they can know he's dead then. Later when the hearse arrives at the graveyard, Linda demands to be allowed to look at the body. The funeral workers don't want to open the coffin because Jim got hurt badly in the accident, and Linda begins arguing with them because it's her right to see. The employees get nervous and accidentally drop the coffin, causing Jim's head to roll out and Linda to break down. Once the coffin is brought to the grave, the priest says some words, and Linda notices a woman watching the ceremony from afar. Joanne doesn't know who it is, so Linda goes to ask her, but Claire says they already talked yesterday and leaves in her car, not caring about the fact Linda swears she never saw her before in her life. When the family returns home, Linda takes a closer look at the medicine bottle and discovers it was prescribed by Dr. Roth. Linda looks for him in the yellow pages and finds the corresponding page was torn off, but when she's about to give up, she looks away and discovers the missing page is in the trash. Linda tries to call Roth's office, but it's already closed for the day. In the evening, the family receives a weird visit, Linda doesn't recognize him but this is Dr. Roth, who is here with Riley to take Linda away under the suspicion she hurt Bridget on purpose. Joanne begs her daughter to explain how Bridget got those scares, but Joanne doesn't remember and begins freaking out at the accusation. A bunch of nurses grab her by force and take her away in an ambulance. Moments later at the hospital, Linda is left tied to a bench and she gets to overhear Roth telling Riley that Linda came to see him on Wednesday and she already knew her husband would die. This makes Riley think Jim's death may not have been an accident after all. Afterward, Roth puts Linda to sleep with an injection, ignoring her pleas for mercy. The next morning, Linda wakes up in her house again. Noises from the bathroom indicate Jim's back, and Linda rushes to cling to him under the shower, not caring if she gets wet too. When the girls wake up, Linda discovers the scars are gone and calls them both her beautiful princesses. Sometime later, she feels a weird smell coming from the trash can and discovers the dead crow is still there, decomposing as if weeks had passed. This makes her nervous so she rushes inside to find the page with Roth's number, only to find it still intact inside the book. Moments later, Linda goes to see Roth, who doesn't recognize her. She tells him all about the visions she's been having, and after he checks for any possible mental illness, Roth prescribes the same medicine Linda has seen on her sink. 
Afterward she goes to see Jim at his office to ask him why he doesn't spend more time at home. She wants to go away with him and the girls and to have a proper talk with her husband, but Jim has a meeting to attend. At that moment, Claire shows up and introduces herself to Linda as if she didn't know her, then she takes Jim to the meeting. Watching them together makes Linda realize Jim is cheating on her. Later at home, Linda decides to throw the medicine in the sink. Suddenly a storm hits the area and Linda asks her daughters to help her bring the laundry inside. Bridget runs without paying attention and ends up crashing against the glass window, getting her whole body hurt. Linda immediately takes Bridget to the hospital and is shortly joined by Jim, who promises everything is going to be fine. In the evening, Bridget is allowed to go home, she's healthy but her face is full of scars. Linda covers all the mirrors of the house so Bridget can't see herself, and tells both of her daughters they're beautiful princesses. Afterward, Linda goes to check on Jim, who is in a bad mood. He wonders why Linda didn't put the stickers on the windows like she promised, and Linda explains that she thought she did. Jim doesn't believe her and says she invited Joanne to stay a few days to help Linda, implying she's been acting crazy. Linda begins crying and swears she's a good mom, but she's ignored. Sometime later, Linda finds the yellow page in her pocket and throws it in the trash. This makes her realize she's been living through all the things that she saw in those weird dreams, which means she's been having visions of the future and she can use this information to impact the present. She grabs some pen and paper and draws a timeline with all the things she knows, coming to the conclusion Jim will die in this timeline during her next business trip. This prompts Linda to ask Jim not to go on that trip, but Jim disagrees, pointing out that their relationship needs some space. The next morning, Linda wakes up on the couch, and Joanne is still around the house. Linda finds the timeline she made and adds more information, realizing Claire is another contradicting point she needs to clarify. After leaving the girls with Joanne, Linda goes to see Claire and confirms that she was having an affair with Jim. Then she goes to see Annie to share how upset she's about the whole deal, but she also wonders if it was a good thing that the accident happened because Jim's affair could have destroyed the family. A few hours later, Linda goes to the bank to confirm the mortgage and her daughter's education have been taken care of, Jim also left her an annuity. To her surprise, the banker says Jim was here before he left on the trip, looking very nervous and wanting to be sure his family would be fine without him. Next Linda goes to watch the local lake for a moment of peace, and a man that lives nearby tells her this is the perfect place to move to when you need to start over. Lastly, she goes to make the arrangements for Jim's funeral. In the evening, Linda goes to bed with wine and Jim's shirt. When Joanne checks on her, Linda asks if letting Jim die is the same as killing him, but Joanne doesn't understand the question. The next morning, Linda wakes up with Jim and tells him to spend the day with the girls in the park. Meanwhile she goes to see Father Kennedy to share her situation. Kennedy tells her about many cases of unexplained phenomena in history and how they were seen as dangers of the faithless because they came from people who lost their faith and were desperate. In Kennedy's opinion, Linda needs to concentrate on what's important in her life and fight for it, but Linda doesn't know what she's fighting for. Next, Linda goes to mile 220, where Jim's accident is supposed to happen. All the visions she's been having rush to her mind and distract her to the point she doesn't see a car coming, but luckily she moves away just in time. In the evening, when the girls are about to go to bed, Linda demands Jim tell them he loves them. Jim promises he loves his daughters and his wife more than everything else in the world. Then Linda goes outside to catch some fresh air, and when Jim comes to check on her, an argument ensues. Linda wants things to be like in the old times, but Jim's sure he's giving the family everything and can't understand what she wants. All of a sudden, lightning strikes a power line and kills the crow that Linda would find later in the timeline. The couple runs back inside and Linda apologizes to Jim for her behavior, then the two of them get frisky. When they're done, Linda confesses she's dreamed about Jim's death, but Jim promises everything's going to be fine and it was just a dream. The next morning, Linda wakes up and panics when she doesn't see Jim. She calls Annie to confirm in which timeline she's in, then finds a note from Jim saying he's dropping the girls at school before leaving for his trip. Linda runs out of the house while calling Jim to stop him, but Jim is too busy to pick up, first with the girls and then with going to the bank to arrange everything for his family. The talk Jim had with Linda last night won't leave his head, and when he gets in his car to go on the trip, he decides to call Claire and end their affair. Then he calls the house phone and leaves the message on the answering machine that Linda heard at the beginning of the story. When he hangs up because another call is coming in, it is Linda herself calling him from her car because she's following him on the road to try to stop him. Linda apologizes for everything and when Jim is about to confess the affair, Linda says she already knows and doesn't care, prompting Jim to promise they will begin working on their relationship more and start over properly. At that moment, Jim sees Linda in the car mirror and pulls over to wait for her. Linda gets ready for a reunion but she freaks out when she notices they are on mile 220, the spot of the accident. She urgently tells Jim to turn the car around, and as soon as Jim moves, a car comes from the opposite direction. Thankfully Jim gets out of the way just in time. Linda is happy to see her husband is fine but it seems she forgot Riley had mentioned a truck caused the accident. Jim tries to start the car again to get off the road but the engine isn't working, and suddenly the infamous truck shows up, crashing right against Jim's vehicle. 
Linda runs to check on him, but before she can come closer, both vehicles explode, and Linda has a breakdown as she finally understands the future can't be changed. Many months later, the girls wake Linda up from her nap when the moving trucks arrive to pick them up. Linda is happy to see Bridget's scars are mostly gone and remembers Kennedy telling her to fight for what matters the most. Currently, what matters the most is Linda's belly, because she is pregnant thanks to that last night with Jim. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.